Meeting the Castle's Keeper. Here's your look at the new Mattel Master Universe Origins, Eternian Goddess, Guardian of the Power in the Universe. Planet Eternia's warrior deity protects the ancient artifacts worthy to be wielded by only He-Man. Before unlocking the secrets of Castle Grayskull, how about we get some comparisons out of the way? Eternian Goddess, would you believe I was to tell you, is using the same mold as Tila? You guys are all very smart. You already knew that. Short of the fact that her skin is a different color, and this one is wearing the headdress piece, which technically was included with Tila in the first place, it would still make then some sense to bring in the original Tila so you can see the difference between the two. It's just really more cosmetic than it is anything else. Speaking of other cosmetic changes, we can also bring in the yellow-skinned Evil Lynn. This would be the based on the original vintage line. And then there was also the off-colored Evil Lynn that was more closer to her 2000 series counterpart. Providing, of course, I move my hand out of the way. And for one last look, seeing as we never seem to bring her in like ever, here she is next to She-Ra. This is all the single ladies of the Master Universe Origins line. And even though in many of the cases they're using the same body mold again and again and again, changing the color scheme, and certainly when it comes to the case of Eternian Goddess and Tila, do you not get two very distinctly different figures? More comparisons with that Tila in a second. In the meantime, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with the Eternian Goddess. And even though technically it's not really an accessory, I would say that. She comes included with the very same comic book that has come with every single figure from this wave. I will flip it around to the back. Here are all the other figures in this wave. And short of the He-Man and Skeletor that we haven't looked at yet, the Beastman, the Webstore, and the Stinkor all came with the very same Rock and a Hard Place comic. Quickly flipping again through it. Oh no, he's flipping through it again. Just quickly, bear with me. Down below you can see, hello young prince. And this is where the Eternian Goddess gives He-Man the powers of the universe. To the point where he's actually able to lift up a rock, scaring Stinkor, and Stinkor through that, unfortunately let one rip. To the shock, unfortunately, of Webster and Beastman on either side of him. I love the artwork that they've actually done here for the Eternian Goddess. Now, I had picked this up online, all these four figures, the ones that we've looked at over these reviews, and that the packaging was the U.S. packaging, so that's probably why you can see the dialogue in the inside. I would imagine when these eventually, several, several months from now, when they eventually hit Canadian store shelves, I would imagine the same comic inside won't have the dialogue, and that's, that's a bit of a shame. But yeah, it's still the same comic, and uh, now wraps up the last figure that we're looking at from this wave until eventually... He-Man I've already ordered. I know. Why did I order He-Man? We, re we already have that He-Man. And I, I'm probably going to order that Skeletor. Why? I don't know. I just do a lot of crazy things like that. Let's put, let's put that to the side. And then for the actual accessories using the bunny ears this time around, she actually comes included with the Snake Scepter. Now, the Snake Scepter is the same, providing the camera's going to focus in. There we go. The one, that, the one in the same as what we got with Tila. Uh, unfortunately, though, I've got like a little black speck there on its face, and there are several other black specks that are on the actual staff itself. It doesn't make, it doesn't seem to at least make an appearance anywhere else on the rest of the shaft, but you can still see there's a couple little specks on the top there. It's unfortunate because it kind of makes it look like it's got one single eye. And I would say if you're going to take the time to do that one dot on that side, at least finish the job and do it on the other side as well. I don't remember if Tila had that on her scepter. The reason why I'm actually not bringing in Tila's scepter and shield is simply just because I can't find them at the moment. I, I had Tila packed away with some of the other Master of the Universe Origins figures, and unfortunately I didn't pack the accessories along with her. Boo! Anyways, you can take this scepter and fit it into either one of her hands. That's the benefit of having gripping hands on both of the figure's hands. So you can either have it displayed like this, or you can flip it around and have it displayed on this side as well. Now, for the reasons why also I couldn't find Tila's scepter is because I like to really display her with like a blaster or a sword. I would probably keep like the accessories that come packaged with the Eternian Goddess with the Inter Eternian Goddess, like, for example, her shield. Although at one point I did have Tila displayed with the shield, so that's not 100% true. The shield is the very same one as we got before and is held in her hand the exact same way as well. And go figure, it was actually made in China. You can take the shield 
It fits into her hand, but it doesn't fit in her hand the way a shield normally would fit. I mean, she's sort of gripping it from the side, like she's carrying around a suitcase. But I guess if you want to bend the elbow, it kind of does look like she's holding a shield. Not that the Eternian Goddess really needs a shield. Oh, right, yeah, because she's got all the powers of the universe. The other thing that the figure comes included with, the obvious one, and the thing that differs her between her and Tila, is the fact that she has the serpent headdress. Tila did come with this as well, and I have taken it off just because I wanted to have her displayed without it. And I knew eventually, sooner or later, rather than later, Mattel would eventually release the Eternian Goddess with the same headdress that I'm going to keep the figure, the one that you're seeing right now, with this look instead. You can see there's a little opening there. Peekaboo, I see you. She's got her head sticking out there. And it's a nice sculpted headdress. It reminds me of Serpentor. You could remove it if you want to. You just have to go around to the back and just untab it like that. And that's the only thing that's keeping it in place. Once that's out of the way, you can easily just remove that and put it to the side. And even more, when you remove it, does it look more like Tila? And there's a difference between the two. This one does look a lot more like a classic Star Trek alien, a green-skinned girl that was in several episodes. But it's pretty much the exact same Tila. Head sculpt, the same. Body, the same. And every other thing I'm going to list, like the limbs and the legs, are all the same. The coloring is definitely different, and that's the notable real change between the one figure and the other. The green skin obviously being the big the big one, but if you also look at her armor, the original Tila would have had the white and the gold, gold gauntlets and gold armbands, whereas this one changes things up, brings almost into like a poison ivy type color scheme. Green on the torso and the lower skirting, I guess, of her armor brought in some additional blue. The arm, bland, arm bands, not blands, are darker blue, and instead of having the gauntlets gold like on Tila, she has silver instead. The boots are also changed as well. Tila's got the darker brown here, a more chestnut brown. And the Eternian Goddess not only has lighter boots, but she also has some additional silver. Which unfortunately makes up the only place where there's a little bit of paint problems. You can see like the airbrushing of the silver has found its way onto the plastic boots. A bit of a shame. Spin the figures around so you can see it from both the sides, front and back. And again, identical to one another. So there's really not much other than just cosmetics that are changing the two figures from one to the other. So you could imagine then, for obvious reasons, why I would display Tila without the headdress piece and why I will display the Eternian Goddess with the headdress piece, because I think that's going to suit her a little bit better. Mind you, I'm going to keep that off at least for now as we have a look at the figure's articulation. So the Eternian Goddess is the same as Tila. Her head rotates all the way around, sits on that ball joint, up, down goes the head and also rocks back and forth as well. It's a really pretty looking face too. Uh, just quickly showing you guys before we look at the rest of the articulation on the figure. Uh, you'll also see too her lipstick. Can you see that? Tila's is just a more lighter pink. The Eternian Goddess apparently likes glitter lipstick. I had no idea. Um, the eyes are also seeming to be about the same as well, but kind of interesting the fact that they would put in glitter lipstick like that. Anyways, moving to the rest of the figure's articulation, the arms go out like all the other figures we've looked at. They rotate all the way around. She has only, only a single hinge on the elbow, but that also allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. I guess you could rotate all the way around as well. And you can also rotate the hands. Also similar. Waist swivel. The legs split out. You can go forward and back on the legs. She has a single hinge on the knee, which is a little tighter on this figure. Rotates the lower leg and also rotates the boots with a hinge back and forth on the feet and also an ankle pivot. Another question I'm sure you guys are probably going to be asking me as well is what are her knees like? I'm so glad that you asked. The knees, you can see that they've also simplified and made the slender looking knee change. This was something that started getting changed with the 2000X design Evil Lynn, where instead of having the blockier capped off knees like this on the original Tila, they went with a much more realistic at least shaped knee for the newer releases so as you can see that is also one thing that's different between the figures her legs naturally look a little more slender and a little more realistic i wish at some point they would re-release tila with knees similar to this because as you can see like that just cut off knee looks so awkward and out of place once again at the end of the day when it comes to not dropping the figures but when it comes to certainly displaying the figures uh, Tila, I would always display without the headdress piece. I've done that before, and I will continue that trend. Let's just get her to stand properly. And of course, now that we've got ourselves the Eternian Goddess, which I knew sooner or later, 
taking just again that same core design of the character. I knew at some point Mattel was going to recolor her and release her as the Eternian Goddess. That is where my friends, I'm going to bring in this and have her displayed with this. I'm going to display her with the scepter, display her with the shield. Shield is probably the only accessory of the two figures that I think they're both going to share. I'm just going to give Tila maybe a blaster and a sword instead. I mean, we could all see this coming. Mattel taking that original Tila figure, coloring her and repurposing her for an eventual release of the Eternian Goddess. It doesn't necessarily diminish this figure. In fact, when you get it in hand, it's really a nice looking figure. It's not just the fact that cosmetically she's different from Tila, but the fact that she does have the removal of the headdress, which that first Tila had anyways. It means that you can have one without the headdress and one with the headdress. I would prefer to display the Eternian go Goddess with the headdress myself. And then you have very much two different looking figures when you have them on display. One thing that also they have corrected with the Eternian Goddess is the corrected knees. Something I did show you in this review. The original Tila and the original Evil Lynn both suffered from very boxy looking knees. The Evil Lynn that got recolored as that 2000X series coloring was released later on. There was two versions of that Evil Lynn. And one of them had the more slender looking kneecaps. They have corrected it here certainly for Eternian Goddess, but at, I hope at some point, I don't know how much interest Mattel has in this, but I hope at one point they're going to be releasing, re-releasing both Tila and the yellow-skinned Evil Lynn with the more corrected knees. Because I got to say, like, the knees look better on this than it did on the original Tila. The Tila's were way too just cut straight off. They were just straight lines. They didn't look like knees. I have to say they look a lot better now in the Eternian Goddess. Have you picked this figure up for yourself? If you have... Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Eternian Goddess and how you're planning to display her. If you guys are new to this channel and you're enjoying, I'm hoping you're at least enjoying the content that's putting out on a regular basis. Usually here on this channel, it's two videos a day, Monday to Friday. Sometimes, depending on how much surplus I have of content, sometimes they trickle their way onto the weekends as well. But Monday to Friday, without fail, you'll find two videos a day here on this channel. So I hope if you are enjoying the content that yes, you're hitting that subscribe button down below that Yes, you're turning on the bell notification. And that, yes, you're coming back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Two videos a day. Unheard of. Lots of stuff, though, coming your way, guys. Even though we have wrapped up, at least for the time being, Masters of the Universe Origins, there's definitely a lot more content popping up. So make sure you keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.